This is Mitch, and welcome to the Real Estate Investor Summit podcast. I have Bill Allen with me, and he's uh, quite the go-getter. has a military background, says uh, um, uh, early's on time and, and, and on time's late. That's how he was raised. So we should all take that lesson, huh? So he's a, a house flipper, wholesaler. He's got a lot going on. How are you doing today, Bill? I'm doing good, Mitch. Thanks for having me today. It's exciting. So you started, you started out in the military. Kind of take me how you end up from the military to uh, the house, the house re investing business. Yeah. So I, I had a CO, a commanding officer when I was a, a military student. And so I went to Georgia Tech and I had a, the commanding officer there at the Navy ROTC department. He said, I bought a house every, everywhere I went. I moved, bought a house, always made money. So that kind of implanted that in my mind. My parents weren't real estate investors or anything. And so um, when I moved to San Diego in 2006, I bought myself a 700 square foot condo on the beach and said, ah, I'm just going to make money on this, right? So um, that's kind of what got me going. I ended up uh, selling it for about $185,000 less than I bought that one for in 2009. I was um, like how that worked out, the condo on the beach. You know, it sounded like you paid top dollar going in. I did. Uh, I paid 385 for it, a 700 square foot condo. I didn't know what I was doing. 80-20 uh, loans, just signed on the dotted line, 100% finance basically. And then I uh, sold it for 200. Uh, fortunately, the military had a, a bailout program called the Housing Assistance Program for anybody that knew about it. And uh, it basically was almost like breaking even. I lost a little bit of money, but it wasn't 185 grand. And so that was kind of a wake up call for me. I ended up buying another house at the next duty station I, I went to before I sold that one. And uh, I started fixing it up and learning about real estate. So I fixed that one up myself. I was still single. I didn't spend a lot of money. Then I moved around and built this rental portfolio basically everywhere that I went um, for the next like three duty stations. So I've moved, I've moved 16 times in the last 18 years in the military. So I move all the time. So I'm constantly have the ability to, to pick up a property and just kind of live in it for a little bit and then rent it out. So I did that for a while. That's kind of the start of the journey. What are you doing now? Where are you sitting right now? Uh, I live in Nashville. I'm about 20 minutes uh, south of Nashville. So a suburb outside of Nashville. And we invest in pretty much the Southeast. Like we invest in Pensacola, Florida, Nashville, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Huntsville, Alabama, and uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. So kind of Kentucky, uh, Alabama, Florida, uh, Tennessee. So like all there in the Southeast. I love Nashville. I've been, I've been writing songs for 40 years. I'm going to get good at it any day now. Uh, <laughs> little known secret about Mitch Steven. Uh, <clears throat> so when did you retire from the military? I'm actually still in the military. So I'm a reservist right now. So I did, I did almost 15 years of active duty and I had a son, my middle son, I have three boys, uh, five, uh, five, three, and two. My three-year-old now, he had a heart condition when he was born and needed open heart surgery. And so that was the time where I said, I can't keep deploying. I really need to be home for my family. And I had built a, a multi-million dollar company at that point while I was active duty already still. And so I was able to leave the leave active duty, but I still fly for the reserves part-time. So I go down to Pensacola 60 days a year and fly for them still. Hey, hats off to you, man. Thank you for your service. Oh, you're welcome. It's been my pleasure. I've, I've really enjoyed myself. Um, and in fact, you know, probably the, the highlight of my, my life so far is yesterday, I, I got to have a phone call with a family and we had renovated an, uh, a house and gave it away to a Gold Star family. So a woman who lost her husband in combat has two girls and we were able to give a house away to them 100% mortgage free as a, a donation to charity. So it's a, one of my passions that, that we get to do and just the kind of impact that you can make in real estate is just amazing. So that, that was that was unbelievable. And to hear her voice on the phone was, was awesome. So pretty cool stuff that we get to do. That would be a big moment in your life to give someone a house. Um, congratulations on that too. Thanks. Well done. Um, so when do you find yourself up to your eyeballs in real estate? Uh, pretty much all the time now. I, I will say I, I started kind of wholesaling. I started as a flipper and I was flipping houses. And then I, um, I started, I, wholesalers always seemed to me to be, I, I didn't really understand the concept or think it was uh, fair to the sellers until I met some really like some wholesalers with real high integrity that were doing a lot of volume and doing it right. And so I kind of just modeled what they were doing and we got to doing uh, hundreds of houses a year um, and building a team. So I spend my time now. I have a COO that runs my company now. So I only work about two hours a week in that real estate company. And then the other uh, kind of uh, 
like podcast education type business is where I spend most of my time just building that out and hopefully hiring a COO here in the next few months. So um, I don't really see the houses anymore. What I love is that I have a team, like I'm focused on building my team and my staff right now, which is really cool. We got 15 people that live and breathe it right on a regular basis and I get to lead them. And that's, that's what I like to do. I found my passion there uh, after a few years of like swinging the hammer and you know, doing the houses myself. Yeah. Um, that's a whole different ball game, right? From being the guy in the business to running the business and not seeing it. I, it took me a long time to get there, 15 years to get there, but I finally have not seen the last 350 houses I bought and I have not talked to or spoken to or shaken the hand of or met the 350 people that bought my house. And that feels really good. And it leaves you free to do other things. I started out to retire, but then, you know, that gets boring pretty fast. <laughs> and so then you think, well, what can I do? So, you, you know, I went into educational space too, just because so many people were asking me how and why, like, I'm sure you like, you do, what, what, what do you, how many units you average a year? How many houses? Uh, we do anywhere between the past three years, anywhere between 165 and 200 houses. Yeah. So um, that's a hell of a volume, you know, I mean, and, and anyone who can do that kind of volume has to have some kind of systems and, and has to have something going for them because you just don't do that by accident. That's a concentrated effort. So I, the reason I'm saying this stuff is just for the audience to know that Bill Allen knows what he's doing. His organization knows what they're doing and he's the leader of it. So um, you always want to talk to someone who's done what you want to do or, or, or is doing what you want to do. And you also want to get a mentor or a coach that it's someone you would like to emulate on and off the field. And you sound like a pretty stand up guy off the field too. So um, well, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> well, you know, go around giving away houses and, flying fighter jets for the country. I mean, you know. Well, I, I think you're right. I think it's really important to find, like figure out who you want to follow and go follow them. Like it, it, and I'm not for everybody and I'm sure you would agree. Like the people that I work with, I love working with them. I have a lot of passion for what they do and, and helping them grow their business and become financially free and basically hit the goals that they want to hit. And I saw somebody doing exactly what I wanted to do. And I just went all in on that, that person. And I just, replicated everything. I basically just took pieces from their business and made a Frankenstein model and then it became my own. And then now I can start innovating and doing the things outside of that and get past where they were. And so I think that's really, really important. Always morphing, always improving. Um, you know, and I'll say the same thing. I'm not for everybody. Um, there's portions of this country that don't even look like where I live and don't feel or have anything going for the same thing. You know, I, I would be a fish out of water in Los Angeles. You know, I'd be a fish out of water in some places. My strategy, the seller finance strategy, you know, we do about a hundred houses a year. I've done a hundred houses a year for more or less a hundred houses a year for over two decades. And I sell or finance over about, I sell or finance about 70% of my, of my inventory. So, that's a whole different thing than um, flipping and, 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 and wholesaling. It's a com completely different model. I mean, we, we both probably can cross over into each other's space. I know how to flip. I know how to wholesale. In fact, the other 30% of my houses, that's what I do. But I, I'm looking for houses that I can carry the note on for 30 years. No balloon, no need to refinance. I just make 30-year notes. So I know when I got started, and it still continues to happen, the pitfalls. Tell me about some of the major pitfalls and how you can avoid them, at least one major pitfall. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, I basically look at my company, I'm a marketing company. You know, I run a marketing company and we just, marketing and sales is what we do. And it just happens to be houses. We should be able to plug in anything. So when I look at wholesalers and flippers, at least flippers that are marketing for themselves, all wholesalers are typically going out directly to the seller and marketing. And what I find the biggest pitfall, and I kind of fell into this in the beginning, was just scratching the surface in a bunch of different channels. So my recommendation is, you know, find, pick one channel, learn it, and go deep into that before you add another one in. So I see so many people say, you know, hey, I'm going to do these five different marketing channels, and they only scratch the surface. And the deals are under the surface, and you really have to go deep. So when I realized that, and I, so direct mail was kind of my bread and butter when I started about 
seven years ago. And I still get about half of my deals from direct mail. It used to be 100%, then it went to 80. Now it's about 50-50 direct mail and online. But I didn't even add my online channel for about six to eight months before I got really, really good and basically hit the direct mail in my market as deep and wide as I could before it became, it didn't make any sense to spend more money there. The return wasn't there. So I see a lot of people do that. I also see people that just turn their marketing channel on and after a month they say this isn't working and they try something else. It's consistency that does deals. And uh, obviously, Mitch, I'm sure you'd agree doing this for 20 years. Consistency in your channel and what you do and your niche and your specialty is what's made you successful. And the people that bounce around from lots of different things, just saying this doesn't work, that doesn't work, I'm going to keep moving around, they don't give it enough time to really determine and, and get the data and, and actually analyze it and see if it works. So those are my two biggest pitfalls that I see in, in actually coaching and mentoring a lot of people on the wholesaling side too. They do that all the time. And it's... It's just pretty common. They don't, they don't to, always jump ships in the channels of marketing, but they'll just jump ship a lot of times in just the um, strategy. Like they'll, they'll be in apartments and then they'll be flipping and then they'll be in mini storage. And then like, you, you got to hone in on something. You got to become an expert at one thing first. And then you'll find the offshoots that are really close to it or the residual. You know, I have eight companies. <clears throat> They're all very closely related. Half of them run off the exhaust of each other. You know, it's like I was getting so many people wanting to borrow money from, um, no, I was getting so much private money. I, I had so much private money coming at me that I couldn't get it all out. I couldn't find enough deals. And it's my belief that just because you have a lot of other people's money doesn't mean you go out and start buying crappy deals. You know, you got to keep your underwriting the same. If you have more money than you can spend, then what else can you do with that money? So I opened up a hard money loan business to loan out to my competitors who happened to find some houses before I did at great prices. And I don't loan them any more money than I would pay for the house if I wanted to buy it. So I have a hard money loan business since 2005. You know that right now to this day, it's not a major going concern. It's actually how I keep my extra residual money in play so they don't go do something else with it until I need it. And the, you know, the, um, the hard money are just six month loans with an option to extend for six months at a time. And anytime I need that money, I just don't extend anymore. You know what I mean? So uh, it's a way, it was a way for me to keep the money out, but keep it in my court and keep it in, in what I wanted to do. And so the business is, the business is more of like that. I have a note a note servicing business, you know, I'm already collecting 500 notes a month for myself. What's another 500 and I'll get my office run for free, you know? So that's how it works. But I was experts at these things before I started, just like you pointed out, you got to be an expert and know that one thing really well and be able to make a living off that one thing and actually have automated that one thing. So that, because any business you take at, tell me if you agree on this, any business you open up, will take everything you have for a year or so. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Um, I, I'm, I'm, a I'm an offender. So I'm on this, I'm on this podcast talking about what I shouldn't have done. I was a deal junkie. I, I bought land. I still own a piece of land from right when I got started in real estate that somebody told me was a good deal and it just wasn't a good deal. I still own it. I pay tax on it every year. Every year I look at it and go, why did I do that deal? Because I didn't know what I was doing. And so I was just looking for ways, looking for places to grasp. And I totally agree. What, uh, you know, anytime I start a new business and I have, I, I do, I, I've now gone into hard money loans. We do some self storage. We do multifamily. We do lots of different things now, but that's me personally. That, that company, that wholesaling and flipping company runs in itself. And then I was able to put a COO in place so I could remove myself completely and go do something else. And then now I'm working in a second company right now. I spend 60 hours a week at least in that company. And I have for the last year, hope, and right now I'm going out and hiring a COO this quarter to be able to remove myself and elevate, delegate and elevate myself to go figure out what the next thing is that I want to do, or like take off all the administrative and little detail burden for me and be able to really just do the things that I love to do instead of the things that I have to do to run the business. I totally agree. At least a year for sure. The hardest thing an entrepreneur will ever do. And this is a Mitch Steven original quote. I don't quote much and I haven't invented hardly anything, but this is one of two. Uh, the hardest thing an entrepreneur will ever do is have one great idea and finish big, mm. you know, finish big because we, as entrepreneurs, we see opportunity in everything. We can see how that would work. I can, I, I can make that a company. The problem is 
it takes damn near everything you have to to get all the pieces in place and the money in place and the in the the minutia organized so that you can get it done. Um, so you have also a large family, right? Yeah. So I have three boys. I have a five year old, a three year old, and a two year old. So we have uh, f- three kids, five and under, right now. So it's it is a challenge. And one of them, one of them, my middle son, like I mentioned in the beginning, he's. Uh, He's special needs, so he's had four open-heart surgeries the first six months of his life. He's got a chromosome anomaly. He'll have another surgery here probably in about six months to a year, um, and that should finish him up, we hope, on his surgeries. So that takes, that takes like full-time care for me and my wife. We have some help around the house uh, to allow both of us to work and do the things that get away a little bit, but um, it, it's, that's, that's the heaviest lift that we have is uh, James. He's just an awesome kid, though. We absolutely love him. Yeah, that's one of the things I ask. Uh, my students sometimes they think it's an odd question. I ask them if they have any um, uh, um, challenged children. You know what I'm saying? I ask them. Mm-hmm. They said, "Why do you ask that?" And I said, "Because it takes a lot of time and commitment, and and we want to make sure that we don't leave that to the side. You can't, you can't leave that to the side. So, so that's one of the reasons I ask that question because it's a it's a big commitment. You got to honor." Yeah. I, you know, the interesting thing, when I was starting my business, I, I actually told my wife, I, so I was flying full time. I was flying 10 or 12 hours a day, five days a week for the Navy. And then one weekend a month, I would have to go leave, uh, go leave the area, work, work the weekend and fly. So that was the requirements that we had. And a lot of people say like, how did you do that? I basically sat my wife down and said, look, we're probably not going to see each other that much for this year. I, I, I want to get this business up and going. I would wake up at 4.30 in the morning. I'd work two or three hours in the office. I'd go fly for 10 or 12 hours. I'd come home and I'd I'd have uh, dinner with, the, with my, we had a baby at the time, our first son, and I'd give him a bath, play with him, put him to bed. And I was in the office for another two hours. And that was pretty much every day, every weekend I was on appointments and I just had to put in the work in the beginning. So um, it's the commitment and dedication, I think, to building a business from scratch. And a lot of, I think that's where some people miss. They think it's kind of going to be really easy. And when you have, now we have a family, fortunately, I told her, I said, look, we're going to do this for a year. I'm going to get this thing up and running. And then it's going to provide for us and allow me to make my own decisions going forward. And fortunately, I did because when James did come along, I was able to pull the plug from the military and not even think anything of it because we already had like a million dollar income coming in from another stream. It was just amazing to see what's possible in real estate. So um, if I can do it, I think anybody can do it, especially if, you're, if you don't have such a demanding job of 60 to 80 hours a week flying for the military. Yeah, I used to think anybody could do it, but it takes someone, you know, yeah. I understand what you're saying. It can be done because you, we, there's the roadmaps out there, but there are, people have to find a business that's right for them. And this business is not right for everybody. Even I, I totally agree. That, that it's just not right for them. I don't know why, you know, I used to think everyone could do it. And I, I you know, I try to get everyone in my family to do it. And I try, and they would fail miserably. And I thought, well, why is this so hard for them? It's not for them. It's not, you know, I have a passion for it. You have a passion for it. The people that are doing, you know, you don't, by the way, you don't have to do a hundred houses a year to make a great living in this business. You don't, you don't. I mean, you could do five houses a year and be extraordinarily ahead of where you're at. So I don't want to paint that picture either, but for people like you and me that uh, want to make a bigger mark with this business, you know, I was working 18 hours a day doing it. You were working 18 hours a day, but you were having to divide yourself. I jumped off. My saving grace was, I made so little money on the open market as just Mitch Steven, you want to hire me. I made like $30,000 a year, 20 years ago, you know? So to flip one or two houses, I had a year in the bank. So I jumped off full time saying, I got a year in the bank right now. I'm going to keep my same budget. I'm going to spend it exactly how I spend it now. I'm going to see what I can do in a year. I did 45 houses that year, saw more money than I ever saw in my, than I ever dreamed I would ever see. And then, you know, it just kept going up from there. And, but I was putting in 18 hours a day. Here's the catch. You couldn't tell if I was working or playing. I was yeah. having fun. You couldn't tell me I was working. They were, man, you're going to stress out. Anything. It wasn't stress for me because, A, I wasn't going out on limbs. I was buying super. I only bought if it was a no-brainer because I was scared. And, and I wasn't in a hurry for anything. And, and back in the day, 20 years ago, you could get in the classifieds at eight in the morning and by, by noon, you'd have a house. And if you screwed up, you'd have two. And they were perfect fits for the model, perfect fit. And you would be wondering how you're going to pay for it. 
you know, but I, I was putting in that kind of time. You obviously put in that kind of time. I'm going to guess that even when you, well, even when you quit the military, you're still working a lot of hours, but it's not work to you, right? Well, you know, I always said that I'm going to stay, I'm going to keep flying as long as I'm having fun. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I, I want to work because I want to work, not because I have to work. That's what I've always said my whole life. And nothing I've ever done has felt like work, really. I mean, there's a couple things. Like when I was deployed and I was, is 120 degrees on the ship and stuff like that, that, that felt like work sometimes. But I will say that I, I really love what I do. I totally agree. And my assumption in saying that anybody can do it is the people who are like listening and watching the show, like you're already, you already have your, you've got your why, you're interested in this. And what I tell a lot of people is you're not necessarily going to know what you like if you already knew your path and where you want to go and what you should be doing it would be easy life would be easy you could just go from point a to point z and already have the path laid out for you you've got to find your way and sometimes that means doing something and not being successful at it and realizing that's not for you so if the, if it's something that you want to do like go do it and like i'm saying i i was an engineer i, I was a test pilot in the navy um i was I, I everything points to the fact that i should be a test pilot for Lockheed or, or Boeing or somebody right now. That's what I should be, be doing. Like the, the government spent $1.6 million on my education for one year in England. And that's what I should be doing, making a couple hundred thousand dollars typically. But I found a different path that I really enjoyed that fulfilled me and filled me up. So when I say that, like, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Like I have certain skill sets that I am and I would build a, a company slightly different than other people. But if you got the why, you know what you want to do, like go do it. It's not it's not impossible. It's not, it's not even really, it's a challenge, but you know, if that's what you want to do, go for it. I see a lot of people that are just kind of afraid to jump into it because Part they think the it's journey. It. I've had people tell me this. you I'm sure you've had people, you've got people that call you and say, yeah, I spent $30,000 in this course. And I didn't get anything out of it. I said, welcome to the club. You'll spend a few, you'll spend a few more bucks and then you're going to find the one and then you're going to be in the way. That's how it worked for all of us. It's how it worked for everyone. We all spent some money and didn't feel like, that was the right guy, but we got better at figuring out what we wanted and who we yeah. want to teach us. And it was part of the path of almost every real estate investor I know is that they spent some money on some courses and stuff that they didn't feel like they got the optimum out of it, but they got, they got to the person. They finally got to where they were, where they did get a mentor with the optimum. By the way, I'm, I'm going to bet a million dollars. You are never without a mentor. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. In fact, it's so funny because you, you're, that, that comment that you just made resonates with me so deeply because when I was, I was so cheap, like I, I went to uh, Georgia Tech undergrad, I went to a master's program where I got a master's in aeronautical engineering. I've been to test pilot school. Like there's millions of dollars, about $2 million being spent on my formal education that I haven't used at all since I left the colleges. And I only spent two years as a test pilot before I went back to be a flight instructor for students again. So like, I don't even feel like I've ever gotten the return on that money that was spent by me or the government, right? And so, but I never looked at self-education like something that I would commit to. I've always, I was reading free forums. I was reading books. And basically people were like, don't give anybody any money. Don't spend any money. So in my mind, I'm like, this is all scams. It's scary. Why would I give other people money? I can figure it out myself. I'm always a, I'll just figure it out kind of guy. Okay, and, stop right there. Stop right there. Okay. Stop right there. You're going to pay the streets, what you just said you're going to do. I'm going to figure out, so I'm going to pay the street tens of thousands of dollars learning my lessons, which is way more stressful than just paying $10,000 or whatever to someone saying, you've already done it. Show me how to do it. Let me have a sounding board. Let me tell you what I'm thinking. You tell me why it's not going to work. <laughs> and then, you know, but you're going to pay, do you agree? You're going to pay the street or you're going to pay the, the mentor? And I did. I paid the street. I bought that piece of land. I, I made a bad hard money loan. Uh, I did. I, I bought a, a poorly performing house. I did. All, I did all the things wrong in the beginning. Right. And I thought it was, I was saving money. I also did a lot of work on my houses in the very beginning. And I was probably working for about 10 or $12 an hour when I actually went back six months and said, how much time did I put in? How much did I make? What was my dollar per hour? It was embarrassing to look at that. So all of those things added up. I mean, I, I was the guy with the library card going to get a book from the library. I wouldn't even buy a book. That's how cheap I was. Um, and, and so it's interesting. So then 
uh, you know, but I've always had coaches. I've had high level coaches and mentors. And um, I was a, I was a, a pretty high performing soccer player. I played semi-pro soccer. I'd always had serious coaches that had developed me. My dad was a huge mentor of mine. And so when I finally woke up to this, I reached out to my dad. I was listening to a podcast and this guy was selling this thing. And I was like, Hmm, this is the kind of guy I want to emulate. This is an exact business model that I want. He just says he doesn't see any houses. He's doing hundreds of houses a year. At first, I was like, this guy's lying. I started to get to know him and understand that our core values and the integrity was there. It started to attract me, right? And so I bought a $25,000 mastermind program from a podcast without talking to anybody. I, and I just put it on my credit card. And that was the first purchase that I ever made. I didn't go to an event. I didn't do anything. I joined a $25,000 mastermind and it changed. I went from flipping one house a year and having no idea how to do it to a repeatable system. And, and like you said, you, you might find the right person. Eventually you might have to go through a couple people to find them. Fortunately, I found my guy like first. And I just... I, sometimes I wish I had done that a little bit earlier, right? But you said, like, this is our journey. I did pay the streets for a while. And then that $25,000 investment I made year after year after year has returned itself 100 times over every year. And um, you, you said you've always, you always have coaches. You probably have coaches. I spend six figures right now per year on business coach. I got a, you know, we run off traction, the EOS model. I have a EOS coach in both of my businesses that meets quarterly. That's not cheap. I go to four events a year. I pay for other masterminds that are outside in the marketing space and other spaces for us to grow and that even my team can plug into and different things because I want to shortcut the learning curve. I've, once you get a taste of that, it's hard to, to remove yourself from it just because the return that you get is so high. Like it, I don't, my time is way more valuable than the money that I have in the bank. That is the most important thing. Like my time is the only thing that I'm not going to get back. I can replenish the bank account. So it's an investment in myself. And I was looking at it as an expense, huge difference. And that, when that mindset shift happened, of course, I have mentors and coaches for everything. I'm watching Michael Jordan right now. I'm watching this, uh, this documentary that they have on ESPN with Michael Jordan. This is the extreme ultimate athlete that I followed when I was a kid growing up. It's taking me back like, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago when I was playing basketball, watching this, the best performing athlete. And they all have coaches. When I see that, it's like, it just why wouldn't you do it? It just makes no sense. So I kind of want to like, I, I, I'm pushed so hard on this because when I realized it, it was such a game changer and so many people fight it. So many people spend so much money on their formal education, won't spend any on their self-education where the self-education can take them to the moon and back. So. Yeah. I tell everyone I graduated from the Chi AU, the most expensive uh, college in the planet. And they go, where's that? And I said, the Chi A means the street in Spanish. So uh, that's, I, I got a diploma and, 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 and the diplomas from the scars I have and the, the horror stories that I learned. So, hey, ma'am, I could talk to you all day long. You, you, you know, we could probably hang out at my ranch for like a week and just talk. Um, let's talk about your course. You've got a course where you kind of take people through the whole thing. Let's talk about your course uh, from beginning to end. What, what does it include? Yeah. So the, the, so the mastermind company that I joined, right. I ended up buying that company. Like I, I moved up as a coach. I moved up in the ranks after five years, we started doing so much volume and then I actually bought that company. And so what I, what I tried to do when I bought it was we rebranded it. We did a lot of, made a lot of changes to it. And I said, we need a repeatable system. Like we have the system, but we roll it out in kind of pieces or people ask in the Facebook groups, like, Hey, do you have this? Do you have this? So what I wanted to do, and I did it primarily for my, my company. So I have 15 people in my company all the way from the marketing department, all the way to the dispositions and project management team on the flips that we do. So I wanted to document every single thing that we do in our company. So how do we get, how do we get leads? How do we pull a list? How do we market? How do we run the, the appointment? How do we do sales? What contracts do we use? And put it all in a place that I could hire someone, plug them in there, and they can basically teach themselves how, how we do business at Blackjack Real Estate. So my real estate company and how we do so many deals a year and where they fit. And then where all the other departments work. So we built this out and then we launched it as part of our mastermind group, which is anywhere from 15000 to $30,000 a year. As, and that was the kind of piece that they had to replicate my system and what we're doing as a company. So um, just recently, Mitch reached out, reached out to me. So I said, hey, let's see if we can make this available to your, your folks. So this is a like soup to nuts, everything that we do in my company from kind of the mindset of getting started as a business owner to 
um, the introduction to it? Do I need an LLC? Do I need a website? Like what are the actions I need to take as a wholesaler or flip? Is this only for wholesalers and flippers? So we have kind of two tracks that you go down and the course includes all of it. So if you're a wholesaler and you want to become a flipper in the future, it's there. If you're a flipper and you want to become a wholesaler in the future, it's there. So the, the mindset and getting started, the whole wholesaling track. So like how do, what is the assignment agreement, walking through that, all the documents, same thing for flipping. How do I do a scope of work? Um, how do I budget it out? How do I hire contractors? What kind of documents do I need there? And then into the sales and the marketing side. So we go through every marketing channel that, that is out there right now. So ringless voicemails, uh, cold calling, direct mail, a pay-per-click, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, uh, driving for dollars. We have a system for each one of them. And what I tell people in the, in the videos is go into that system and look, it starts from, I have no money and I have time all the way to, I have no time and I have money. And it goes in that order. So you can basically pick that thing that you want and it's the systems right there. You should be able to plug it in, get going without any questions afterwards. And then the sales and the negotiation all the way from the sellers to the buyers, how to squeeze as much money out of the deal as you can with the contracts. So it's really like the way I think about it is if we were going to franchise our company, here's what I would give to a franchise owner to be able to kind of turn the key and start the business in the beginning. So that hopefully that explains it um, pretty well. It's, it's mostly, it's kind of me, me or my staff walking through our entire business model on video. And we recorded it. We gave it to our mastermind members. It's been incredibly successful for them. It's primarily what they, what they get for their membership as well as a couple meetings and things like that. But this is the gas. The course here, you know, um, we're all, we always, us podcasters are always trying to help each other out. We generally have a, a price that's out there in the world. And then if someone will sign up on the podcast, we give a discount. Um, Bill Allen was very gracious. His, his course usually sells for about 2000 bucks. He's offering it for 1997. Um, if you'll use the link, reinvestorsummit.com forward slash Allen. That's A-L-L-E-N. And let's just put a one on the end of that, just in case I've used that name before. So reinvestorsummit.com forward slash Allen one and um, the number one. And that'll get you over to the show notes and you'll, you'll, see the offer there. You'll be able to sign up for it. I'm sure there'll be contact information if they just want to learn more or figure out more um, before they commit. I'm sure that'll all be there too. Man, I could talk to you forever, but, but I'm going to read you something I put in the quote of one of my first books was uh, My Life in a Thousand Houses, Failing Forward to Financial Freedom. I was in that time where I had no money, but I had time. And then I need to become an expert so I can make good use of that time. So when, like just what Bill said, if you don't have money, you're going to substitute time and expertise. You can, you, you can make the time, but if, you, if you're not an expert at what you're doing, you're just going to flounder around. So courses like this or mine or mentorships are what help you grab the expertise so you can make good use of that time. But what I wanted to show you is I put this quote in the book. It was the first time ever my wife said she fully understood me because I would be out doing things that look like, you know, even if I was, I went out to eat with people or I went um, to happy hour or whatever. She'd say, you're not working. You were out having fun. I said, not really. The guy I sat next to was worth a lot of money. And we're having a meeting tomorrow now about him loaning me private money. And finally, she, she read this first quote in my book from, from um, James Michener. It said, the master in the art of living makes little distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his information and his recreation, his love and his religion. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence at whatever he does, leaving others to decide whether he is working or playing. To him, he is always doing both. And that's why we can put in our 10,000 hours without blowing up or being exasperated is because we don't even know when we're working or playing. It's a game. I tell people all the time that are really good on these um, video games. I'm say, man, how many hours do you spend? They spend an extraordinary amount of hours and they get paid nothing for, for this typically. I mean, there's a few diehards out there that get paid a little bit for testing games and stuff. But I said, I play a video, I, I play an internet game too. It's called how much money can I make this computer crap into my bank account? And it's called marketing. Pick anything you want, become an expert at it. You could spend that many hours. You're going to make, if you spent that many hours studying marketing and, and, and you hit the nail on the head, we're, no matter what company you have, you're a marketing company or you don't have any customers. I don't care what you're selling, right? 
Yep, so, absolutely. So I want to thank you, man, for 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 coming on. I'm I have no doubt with your background that you're you're well thought out, well planned, uh, and well delivered. Um, hey, Mitch. Mitch, before before we sign off, I, your quote made me think of one, and, and if you don't mind me sharing, oh, no, I, sure, I've been ahead. I've been like really this this whole last dance. I watch an hour of it the past kind of four nights in a row. And Michael Jordan has a quote that I absolutely love. And it reminds me, your quote reminded me a lot of it and what we've been talking about. It says, uh, you can practice shooting eight hours a day, but if your technique is wrong, then all you become is very good at shooting the wrong way. Get the fundamentals down and the level of everything that you do will rise. And I think that's what, that's what I got from like having a mentor and following a proven system was that instead of me kind of searching around for what's happening, I was able to actually build the foundation strong. And what that did was it allowed everything that I do. Now, I mean, you can take away all my money, all the, all, my team, my staff, everything tomorrow. Drop me on a corner in any, any town USA, anywhere in the world, frankly, with no money, and they can't take away my experience, my knowledge, all of the things that I got from that. And that kind of investment is something that I had never made in myself. And I, I don't know if Mitch mentioned, but we actually dropped the price for you guys 500 bucks. So uh, it'll be for, it's 1497 instead of 1997. We were going to roll it out for 5,000. So we really cut. And for me, it's, it's an opportunity for you if it's the right fit. If the wholesaling and flipping is where you want to go, like the fundamentals are what it's all about. And it's my goal to make sure that we make an impact on as many people as possible. I'm sure Mitch would agree. The money was good in the beginning. Then, then that, that became kind of a game like we've talked about a little bit. Then it became time and I got the time freedom. And now it's more about the impact that I can make and the people that I see and the, the lives that we can change. And a lot of people like talk about educators and really kind of put them down. But for me, like, it's really what fills me up now is the impact that I can make on my team, my staff, the other people that are out there. Like we could go franchise this and take this video series and just sell franchises all over the US and take residuals from people. But I don't want to do that. Like I want to figure out how I can help somebody else because I've been helped so much by the people before me. My mentor helped me. So now we're creating like this family tree where he's kind of like the the grandfather on the tree and all these people are just being impacted and improving their lives. It's amazing to see. So I love this quote. I think the, the fundamentals and the foundation, it allows you to do everything in your life to a higher level, not just, not just business. Like I do everything at a higher level now. It's not just my business. It's my spiritual life. It's my family. It's my friends. It's like everything that I, my, my, my uh, athletics, I take it all to the next level now. And it's just allowed me to kind of up my game and spend time with the right people. So, well, uh, I appreciate all that. It is. It, it does run that way. First, you just need to make the money. It's all about the money because you're broke and you, mm -hmm. need to, you need to make your strike. And then you got the money and you don't have any time because you, you got all this money now and you're worn ragged. You're wearing all these hats. So then you go to the next challenge of how do I systematize this or how do I get a business running without me? You know, so I can enjoy what I've made. And then after that gets boring, you, you know, you go into retirement and you do all that for a little while. It's like, it, I, I got to go do something and it's not about the money anymore. Cause I don't, I don't need any more money. Would I like to make some more money? Sure. Uh, because that's part of our game, right? Being better mm -hmm. next year than you are last year, because we wouldn't feel good if we made less. So we're still continue to grow, but it's not really about that anymore. It becomes, how do I, how do I give a hand up to someone now? How do I bring something else up? One of some of the most rewarding Days, you know, Dave Ramsey rings the bell. I mean, does the primal scream when they get debt free. Um, Dave Ramsey would hate me. I did my first hundred deals on credit cards, but I'm just a student of the difference between good debt and bad debt. But we ring the bell at, at my studio when someone calls in and goes, I just told my boss I don't need his services anymore. And the reason is, is because I don't. I make more money from the part-time business that I started with you, Mitch, than, than now, than what I made at my deal and I can quit. Or would they retire their wife? You know, that's the second time we ring it. Usually the, the one spouse retires, or I mean, I'm sorry, goes full-time and becomes their own person. And then the next time we ring the bell is when their wife quits their job, you know? So that's very rewarding. I've had people drive uh, hundreds and hundreds of miles to knock on my door, shake my hand, we both have a good cry, and then he gets back in his car and he leaves, you know, because they're so grateful that someone took the time to show them how to be their own person. 
and it's it's emotional and it's rewarding and you know you can't buy that with the money so yeah that's that's awesome i just wrote that down i need to get a bell we have a, a this kind of like quit your job calendar that we create for our mastermind members and we we have them all on there so we're calling them to say how's that going and that's a huge celebration but something momentum momentous like that uh is is really awesome i love that so well, you know, that's cool there's also you know you might i was thinking of trying to come up with something more original so but i, I went back to when when you pay off your house you had a mortgage burning party right you took your mortgage papers mm-hmm. burned them and roasted marshmallows over them so I think we we We've got something. So military challenge coins are really big in, in the Navy and the flight community and things like that. I don't know if you've ever seen one, but um, so we have a challenge coin for people that when they enter the seven figure club, so they hit seven figures in their business per year uh, in October at our event, we have a ceremony for them where they get this big plaque and a military challenge coin that I shake their hand just like they would in the military. So that's one thing that we, that's really high level, right? You got to hit seven figures to, to get there. So, uh, but pretty cool. You just got me thinking, see, this is what a mastermind does. You ping pong. And you keep one upping, and that's what happens. That's how I got free. I paid thirty thousand dollars so I could finally figure out. I tried a lot of times to systematize my business. I failed. I, I paid thirty thousand dollars. I got in a room with people that already did it. It happened and that year. It was over. You know what I mean? It, it happened in that year. Um, but so so there ought to be like a coin when you um, when you do your first deal. There ought to be a coin when you quit your job. There ought to be a coin, like you should say, it should mark all the levels, like Boy Scout pennants or pins or whatever. Uh, and I bet you, and if it, and if my coach or mentors would have had that system and they had me my coins, they would be framed on my wall right now. All yep. of them in order. They would be framed. Uh, on it's done. I love it. I love it. This that that was very helpful for me uh, actually because. I love that first deal coin, maybe a quit your job coin, a hundred K coin. Like there's just different levels of, of coins. And then we could even build a, a man. I don't want to talk about this on here. My members are going to put, hold me to it. There's a, we can build right now. We have a plaque that they do put in their office that I sign. I write a note because in the military, when we leave you have a bunch of blank circles on it, exactly. <laughs> they can, so it has a place to put all your coins in like a collection. Oh my gosh. It's done. No, no, I love it. The first house I made 20,000 profit on, the first house I made 50,000 profit on, the first house I made 100, the first deal I made $100,000 profit on. It could go on I, and on. It'd be a hell of a board, wouldn't it? Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's done. That's, uh, I, and I'll tell you, my speed to implementation is, is lightning fast. So by the time, by the end of the day today, we will be in motion on this. So will you, will you do me a favor? Will you show me where you get the boards made and order the coins? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. All this right. was like a last minute, last minute thing before our event last year. I was like, we have to have an award ceremony for our folks because uh, they just need to feel special. Like that's what we need. Sometimes we just need, we need that feedback and that continues to fuel us. We see that result. It changes our belief and then it, our actions just like, explode after that too. So really cool stuff. All right. I love it. Done. So, do you ever get to San Antonio? Uh, I, I, I want to, I've got some friends there and I'm, I, I've tried to get down there for a mastermind, uh, for one of our mastermind meetings. Our plan was to go to San Antonio. Um, and then all this stuff happened. So, uh, yeah, you, that, you, what's you, going on? Please, Bill, will you please schedule an extra day or two? And I'll, we'll, we'll I'll take you down to my ranch and we'll have some fun. Cause you seem like a person that I really like to, to get to know better. Uh, I'd love to do that. That sounds like a lot of fun. All right, man. This is Mitch Steven with the real estate investor summit podcast. I would like to thank my sponsor, TaxFreeFuture.com. You won't believe what your financial advisors aren't telling you. Please go to TaxFreeFuture.com. Give the little micro information there about yourself and open up those 37 video vignettes. You won't believe what having a tax-deferred or tax-free retirement plan can do for you and your finances and your retirement. It's unbelievable, but it takes people that know what to do because you can't just put $200 in it and expect it to grow to a million bucks overnight but it can be done and it can be done rather quickly. So watch those video vignettes. All right. I'd like to thank all of y'all for stopping by to get you some Bill Allen and we're out of here.